Happy Sunday, friends. We are live. It is 8 p.m. on Resurrection Sunday. I hope you had a wonderful Easter with your family. I have been traveling, so I just got back. I flew the red eye from California. I visited my family um, for spring break. Uh, so I, had to, I hadn't seen my father in, in a while, almost five years. And so that's what I did this past week. I hope you had an amazing Sunday. And we had glorious weather here in Kentucky, and I hope you had a chance to enjoy it. So I'm not sure how many people are joining us tonight because it is Easter Sunday, but I will go ahead and conduct this live lesson, and I hope uh, that you will enjoy it. So the first thing that I want you to do is uh, I want to remind you what we're doing tonight, which is Summer Sampler Block Number 6. Um, this is an interesting block, and I'm going to talk about Easy Corners tonight because last Sunday I had a recorded lesson rather than a live lesson. So let me know who's out there. I see several people are online with us and I will go ahead and get started on our block tonight, okay? But I hope you had a wonderful week. All right, so I'm gonna turn down the camera so you can see what I've got going on here. All right, so this is block number six. So we are halfway done with our summer sampler series and this block can be done in a couple of different ways. So if you are here, let me know uh, your name in the chat. Tell me who you are. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just get started. Okay, so let's look at this block. So first of all, this block can be made in two different ways. You can make four half square triangles for this mid middle part and do all two and a half inch squares. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can make easy corners for each of these units. But let me break down this into quadrants. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line and I'm going to show you what this is. This is actually a four patch that consists of this unit right here. So this is what you have. You have a half square triangle that's two and a half inches square, 2.5 inches. You have a two and a half inch square, a two and a half inch square, and a two and a half inch square. That's what you have here. You have this same block, it's just rotated clockwise all the way around. So this is a 2.5 inch grid. So each of these units is two and a half inches. Like I said, we can make this with four uh, half square triangles that are sewn, four half square blocks, and three two and a half inch squares. That's one way of doing it. And the other way of doing it is doing an easy corner. Last uh, week when I was not live, I had a couple of questions about easy corners. So let me talk about easy corners really quick before we get started. So an easy corner, the way I did it last time, can be done in a variety of ways. Um, one way of doing an easy corner is simply drawing a line from corner to corner and I could just take my ruler and draw a line corner to corner just like this and I can sew directly on that line or a little bit to the right. Now that's okay um, because when you do that you can be pretty accurate. I don't like to sew on the drawn line because what happens is when you take and you fold that over and you press it, you lose a tiny bit in that stitch line. And so sometimes you end up with a block that's not exactly two and a half inches. It tends to be a tiny bit smaller. So what I like to do is I like to take this line and I actually like to lay my ruler right on here on that quarter inch line. And I like to trim this side. And then so using my quarter inch foot, I like to sew a scant quarter. And when I do that, that makes it extremely accurate. So if you have a question about sewing easy corners, please drop them in the chat. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and where you're watching. So that was just an explanation about easy corners. So this is the block that we're making. And so we have four units. I have marked them here. They're all two and a half inch square. And I'm gonna start by making four easy corners because that'll reduce the amount of bulk that I have right here. And so I'm gonna make this blue unit. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my fabric 
In this case, I'm going to use a pink for the outside. So this is my border, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to use this blue for my rectangular units that I'm going to build right here with an easy corner. And then I have this green, which I'm going to cut into four two and a half inch squares. So you need background. In this case, I'm going to use this color that came in my jelly roll. So you need background for the four squares in each corner and the four easy corners. That means you need a total of eight background squares. And you will need four green squares and four rectangles. All right, so let me get started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. So we have Chris from Iowa. Hi, Chris, how's it going? Go ahead and get started cutting. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my green and my white, and I'm just gonna layer these on top. I do like to layer my fabric because it makes it much faster to cut. And then I like to use my big rotary cutter for this. And when I have several units to cut, this just makes it faster. I always stack them on top very carefully like this. I like to measure my jelly roll strips because sometimes if you get um, from different manufacturers, the jelly roll strips might not all be exactly two and a half inches. This one here, when I lay my ruler on top, I have the little teeth sticking out and that's good. That means my uh, strips are two and a half inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut really quick. I hope you had a wonderful Sunday and enjoy the weather with your family. So we are cutting um, four, in, four green. So I'm going to cut here. I have it layered. So I have one, two. So I have four green. I'm going to stack them here. And I have four background. I need a total of eight background, so I'm going to set my green aside. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to set my green out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and cut just my background. So I have two more and two more. And I love using this little two and a half inch ruler with my... Um, when I make these kinds of blocks. So there you go, I have eight background, two and a half inches square, and I have four of my green. So if you'll refer to your pattern, you need four green, and then I have eight, so there's four in the middle and four on the outside, background squares. Now I'm gonna cut these rectangles right here that are blue. I'm gonna make those four and a half inches long, and I need four of those. So what I will do, is I will fold my fabric. So this is two thicknesses. I will lay it like this and I will double it up like this and that way I can cut all four at the same time. I'm gonna remove my selvage. And then I'm going to, of course, measure twice and cut once so that I don't mess it up because I have done that before Been very sad when I was working on a project and I didn't uh, double check but sometimes you measure from the wrong end of the ruler so sometimes I'm measuring from this side and I was like wait a minute I need to rotate my ruler so always check that you're counting from the one this direction and if you notice I don't use my lines I use the ruler itself and it needs to be four and a half inches long and now I'm just making my cut and I have all four pieces so this one um, doesn't require a lot. And so I'm gonna set this aside and I will save these scraps for another block. So it doesn't take much and then you're ready to go. So set that aside. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Faye. So Faye from Pittsburgh, Texas. Welcome, Faye. All right, so there we've got it. Let's talk about those easy corners. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. If you notice, your block has directionality. So we're gonna look at these. And so if you lay that block right on top of your pattern, just like this, right? It has a directionality. So this one, the easy corner goes to the left. 
So when you lay that, you're going to lay that face up and you're going to lay that easy corner right sides together, right on top, just like that. And I put the serrated edges to each other. So now in order for my block to lay the way it is, just like this, then I know that that easy corner needs to go from the bottom to the top or from the left to the right. How I'm going to do that, right? And then this one goes the same direction. If I look at that one, this one is identical and this one is identical. So I can actually do that four times. So I'm going to, I'm going to lay this so that it faces me. So this is the opposite to where you're looking at. And I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to look for that quarter inch line. So this is a little ruler that I use all the time. It's literally just an inch ruler. So it's one inch wide um, and it has like markings. So it's like six inches by one inch. And I love this little guy when I'm working on things like this. So I'm going to lay that down, right? It's going to go down this way and I'm going to bisect this quarter inch line right here that's on my ruler is going to go from corner to corner across the top. And then I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut away the excess. So when I stitch this, I'm going to use my quarter inch foot and that will be super accurate. And so I'm going to lay this to the side and I need four of those. And so I'm just going to put them all the same. I like to assembly line sew. That way I'm not making mistakes. It's, it's less likely that you're going to make a mistake if you do the same step over and over again um, on a quilt. Now, you can also uh, make a mistake and you can repeat a mistake accidentally. So that can also happen too. So just be careful. And you should be able to just take care of this lickety split. And like I said, this could be done a couple of different ways. I can draw a line and sew a little to the right of that line, or I can do it this way. But I like to do it this way because then there's no guessing. I know exactly where I'm going to sew and exactly how I'm going to press. So then I'm just going to take every one of these and do the same thing. I'm going to lay that quarter inch line from the left to the right, right across from corner to corner, just like that. And then I'm just going to give it a little trim. Save these little guys because I'm going to show you what to do with these later. You see these little friends? Don't waste those little friends. I'll show you what happens with those. Same thing. Look at the split. I have stacked these before and cut them. It wasn't a, a good outcome. So I don't recommend doing that. But there you go. You have four little friends that are getting ready to get stitched together. Did any of you watch Bob Ross um, a couple of decades ago? I'm not a spring chicken, and I used to watch Bob Ross, and he had happy little trees. Well, I have happy little uh, easy corners going today. So, Carolyn from Iowa. Hi, Carolyn. I see 11 people out there. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, I was not live last Sunday because I was traveling. I was on my way to my parents' house, but here I am. All right, four little easy corners. I'm getting ready to sew them. And then this block is going to go together really quick this Sunday. I usually keep a quarter inch foot on my machine. Um, it just helps me to be more accurate and I like to be consistent. So I'm going to take those and now I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away and I'm going to chain piece those. So just give me a second and then we will continue with our block. When you're sewing a half square triangle like this, you are sewing on a diagonal, which means this is the bias. When I do that, I try not to manipulate the fabric. I let the feed dogs pull it, and I try not to stretch that, and I sew slower than I normally do. And the reason I do that is because I don't want that bias to stretch. Now, some people will, uh, will use a bunch of starch, and that sometimes helps. Um, but like I've told you guys before, I'm not a starch fan. Um, regular starch can attract uh, insect activity to your quilt, you know, like moths and uh, silverfish and other things. And I would just rather not do that. I also like to wash my 
wash my quilts um, after I, I make my quilt and the whole thing is quilted and bound, I usually like to wash it the first time with uh, either spray it with retain and then use a couple couple of color catchers or um, I just wash it depending on, on the colors before I give it away. And that way the person who's getting my quilt um, doesn't have to worry with whether or not those colors are going to run. And I know that that quilt is going to be crinkly and beautiful for a long, long time. All right, friends. So now I have my little, my little chain of easy corners and I'm going to go ahead and press them. And then I'm going to measure them to make sure that they turned out exactly the way we wanted them to be. So let's flip down the camera. Let's press to our little heart's content. Now, which way do we press this block? Let's look at it. If you notice, there's a little seam here, a little intersection right here. And you have two half square triangles that meet right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this one, I'm gonna sew towards the dark this way, and this one, I'm going to do it in the opposite direction this way. So I'm going to go one down and one up. And the reason I want to do that is so when they meet right here at this intersection, those two um, will nest. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So let me get my scissors. Let me snip, snip these apart. I could also use my thing. So where these two meet, let's see, that seam looks pretty good. Check my seam. Doesn't look too crooked. I didn't go too crazy there. Set my seam by pressing it. It flattens it out. It locks those stitches. Um, so if you ever wonder why people do that, it's it's to set those little stitches. They shrink just a little bit, and um, they end up looking more accurate. So let's look at this. So one of these is going to go down, and one of them is going to go up. So this one I'm going to press towards the white. Just like that. And then it's partner, I'm gonna press the opposite direction. Pressing does some amazing things. If your block is not super accurate, one of the things that you need to check is your seam. In this case, most cases, we are using a scant quarter. And so check your measurements. I'm gonna measure this really quick to make sure that it measures two and a half inches by four and a half inches. If I'm going to trim off of this block, which it has a tiny bit of overage, I'm going to make sure that I trim off of this bottom and not this top. Because if I do, I might chop something off, off of my uh, points over here and they won't be as sharp as they need to be. So this is looking good. This is looking very accurate. It needs a tiny sliver trim. All right. So this friend is going to lay this direction. And then I'm going to have another one of my friends that on the block, right, will lay this way. When I press this guy, I'm going to want to press because these are going to meet right here at this corner. I'm going to press this one towards the dark. This one is pressed towards the light and I'm going to press this one towards the dark. By doing that, when I connect these, I will have seams that are opposite. So when I lay these and I get ready to sew them, those seams will go in opposite directions. And that's what I want. I want those seams to lay in there together. And by pushing them there where they belong, then when I sew that, that point will be extremely accurate. When I open that, I'll be able to have a super accurate point. So let me uh, lay this here. And so I know this one goes towards the dark. I'm gonna go ahead and press that. And I'm gonna do the same with the opposite side. So on this side, right? I'm going to go, this went one direction, this went the other. This one over here is going to join us this way. And so this is going towards the light, just like this. So this is the middle. This one is going towards the light. This means this one is going towards the dark. And so this one and this one that are opposite sides are going towards the dark. And this one and this one that are going this way are going towards the light. Is this making sense so far? Hi, Lynn. So this is how this is gonna go. This is to the light, this is to the dark. 
And so opposite directions. And that way, when we connect this unit, these seams in the corners that make this square will nest perfectly. And you don't have to worry about how your blocks are going to lock together. And so then this has one like this. I'm going to lay out all my pieces. This has a outside corner is white and inside is green like this. And I've got it all laid out. So these are all of my pieces. So I'm going to press this up and then I'm going to sew it in rows. But first I'm going to check this. This block here is looking a little wonky. That can happen when you're sewing with bias. So I'm going to press these really quick and then I'm going to put together my block in little rows. So let me press. And we will continue. So this one is ready. This one is ready. So I'm going to lay them on top of each other like this because they're partners. And I'm going to press this guy. Just like this. And that one looks pretty accurate. And then this one is not too friendly. I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to check it from the back, from the seam. Straighten it up. You'd be amazed what an iron can do. If your block is not super straight, you can always press it and check it. You can always go in and re-sew a seam. See how it has a wobble right there? And it goes a little crooked. It doesn't lay flat. That means that when I was sewing, I veered off course just a hair. And I can see it right there. And so I can come over to my sewing machine. And I can go ahead and just that little spot right there where it veered off course. I'm going to see how it's not exact on that corner. I'm going to re-sew starting here and go over. And that way I can ensure that my block is super accurate. So I'm just going to give it a little trim. And so that's why it's important. See if you notice it veered off course just a hair and that can happen when you're sewing. And so when you press it, you check those seams very carefully. And that way, when I open it and I press it and I check it again, I can say, yep, does my block lay flat? That's one of the things that causes pieces not to lay flat is when the seams are crooked. Crooked seams will do it every single time. And so I have one up, one down, one up, one down. And so now we are ready. I will measure all of these guys carefully. Make sure that these are four and a half inches. I will go ahead and sew these. I could have done this as a strip set here. I could have sewn these four as a strip set and then chopped them apart, but I didn't. Um, like I said, there's always more than one way to do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew them in pairs with the green on one side and the white on the other. So I'm just gonna lay it green, white on top, and I'm gonna chain piece all of these on one side. Like I said, I could have sewn these all together earlier, but I didn't, and it's not a big deal. Find a system that works for you. I like sewing little pieces. Some people like to strip piece. It just depends on what it is that you like to do, whatever your preference is. Um, there's no like super wrong way of doing things. So you decide how you want to do it, and then you do it. So. I have had my fill of chocolate at Easter Bunnies today. There we go. And sometimes when I eat too much candy, my brain gets a little foggy. I don't know about you guys, but um, I can't resist eating chocolate. Chocolate and fabric are my two. Well, and coffee. Coffee, fabric, and chocolate are what make the world go round. The Aztecs considered chocolate food of the gods, and I agree. All right, so now I have all these little guys, and I'm ready to go. So if you're a chocolate eater, 
Tell me what kind of chocolate you like, light or dark? Are you a light chocolate eater or a dark chocolate eater? Are you like milk chocolate or dark chocolate? I'm going to press all of these towards the green. And these are going to be the same and they get rotated 90 degrees. And then I'm going to check every one of these units because they should all measure four and a half inches by two and a half inches. So set that seam towards the green. Now this block goes together really fast. Some of the blocks we've done have a lot of trimming, have a lot of piecing. This block is a great little block for beginners. Um, this uh, block also uses scraps quite well. So if you have a few scraps, all you need is four pieces of one color and a few little scraps of another. You can even make um, this particular block, you can even make all of these a different color and then make these all a different color. And this would make a great, great scrappy block. So I love this little block. It is a modified pinwheel. It's also known as a wagon wheel. Um, I don't know why it's called a wagon wheel in the because it's square, but it's called a, a modified pinwheel as well. All right. So I have four of these, and I have four of these that I have pressed. So now I'm ready to measure all of these before I put them together. So Carolyn likes dark chocolate, and Lorraine likes milk chocolate. I love all chocolate, but my favorite is chocolate with nuts. So I like a Hershey bar with almonds is one of my favorite things. But dark chocolate is also delicious, especially if you can get it in a truffle so that it has like raspberries or something else in it. Like fruit. Okay, here we go, friends. These are our units. Four of these, four of these. I'm going to quickly measure to make sure I don't have to trim anything off of these. So I'm going to lay that on there. That seam was scant, so this is a needs a sliver trim on this side. I'm going to get rid of those little serrated edges because this was a tiny bit. Uh, these strips were a tiny, tiny bit wider than two and a half inches. And so I want to make sure that all of my blocks will fit. And so I sliver trim off of each side a tiny little bit like this. And so those are accurate. And I just always like to double check. Pressing can really change the size of your blocks. So you should always, always double check them. And make sure that they match. You're less likely to get a block that's the wrong size if you just double check at each phase. And so I've got these little tiny slivers that I've done here. And so I'm going to trim them up. It pays off to trim your blocks in the long run. I mean, I could probably skip this step and get away with it okay. But I just think that it really helps you as a new quilter to really um, be more uh, accurate if you practice just a few little habits of measuring and pressing as you go. a little crooked. I'm going to fix that. And then that one will make it dead on four and a half inches. When you have a seam in the middle like that, sometimes your rulers will wobble, which is why my two and a half inch ruler that I use has little feet on it. So if you have a ruler, you can put these little rubber feet. If you notice, they stick up just a hair. And so especially when you're trimming, you can lay that on there like this and those feet will stick up and it'll make it easier to trim. So let's look at this. So I'm going to stick this on here and I'm going to check that that is a two and a half inch easy corner and that is straight. So I see a little tiny sliver I can get rid of and it's just the little smearing of teeth. I'm going to do the same thing to these. I'm going to check these so that they're two and a half inch square on that line and that I don't have anything weird sticking out. That looks pretty good. And we've got that little dog ear on that corner that I'm going to shave off so it doesn't cause me any problems. And these are looking pretty good. All right. 
Time to assemble the block. All right, I'm going to refer back to my thing, and I have to flip these over because these are opposites. Remember, these two are going to the press to the dark, and then these two are pressed to the light, and so that will help them to nest. I have two lights and two darks, so I'm going to lay these together, and I'm going to start, and I'm going to lay this out like this. I'm going to take one that goes towards the dark with its two friends, and this is one unit. So this is one of the unit, one of the corner units. So I'm gonna sew it with this on top. And all of my units will be the same. So I'm just like how you see this, right? You have the easy corner, right? Going this way, just like it is there. And then I have this unit right here and they're all going to be the same. So there are four patches that look like this. You can pin them if you want. So you can lay them here. And I always pin because there's no seams to match really until we get to the center part. I always pin on the side that I'm gonna sew. And that way my, when I take them over to the sewing machine, I won't accidentally sew on the wrong side. So they're all the same. This one is to the light. So now I need one that's to the dark. I'm going to press to the dark, press to the light. So this is my next one. And I will do it the same way. And when I match those up, I pin that. I always use the, the, the fix of my fingers to help me to get those um, fabrics lined up on those edges. Same thing here. I'm going to take two more pieces. Oh, and look, I didn't lose any pieces this time. And I'm also going to put the green to the top, the white to the bottom, and it's going to be the same on all four units. Oh, hi, Sonia. Don't worry about uh, being late. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. I was running behind too. I took a flight last night that was supposed to leave at 9 p.m. Pacific time, um, but instead it did not leave until midnight. Um, it was super full, so I ended up waiting for extra hours at the airport. Then because they changed our flight and it was delayed, we ended up waiting three hours in Chicago O'Hare before heading to Cincinnati. So I traveled for 12 straight hours with two toddlers in car seats. So it was a lot. It was a lot. All right. All right, friends, I'm going to take these four units now over to the sewing machine, and this block is coming together easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Ready to go? I'm using my quarter inch foot, making sure that everything is accurate and straight, and I'm going to sew slow. Use my pin cushion. suggestions for anybody who's new to sewing is for you to always check your quarter inch seam line um, and test them. If you sew two pieces together that are two and a half by two and a half, when you have this unit, it should measure four and a half. And if it doesn't measure that, then you should um, adjust either your needle position or you can put a guide. You can put either painter's tape, moleskin, or something so that you're measuring that where that needle is hitting so that you know exactly where that quarter inch lies. 99% of quilt issues are due to either um, cutting the wrong size or sewing with a seam that is either too big or too narrow. So if you can master that perfect quarter inch seam, then 99% of the problems are solved. keeping it straight when it feeds through there. I don't push or pull. I just let the feed dogs do their work. Some machines have too much pressure on the presser foot and that can cause issues. So that's another thing that you can see if one of your pieces changes in size. As compared to the other, you can always check the presser. Mine has a, a guide right here that says like 
down and up. And so I can adjust this knob and it changes how much pressure is on my presser foot. And so if your machine does that, um, that's one thing that you can do. Sometimes I find that when you're sewing with cotton fabric, just a couple of layers, if you have too much pressure on that presser foot, then it can really distort your box. There I have them. All my four little units that are the same. And let me press them up and let me see if I did a good job. Let's find out. All right. Let me get my little pressing mat. I love my little pressing mat. I just ordered one that's really big. It's like 30 inches. It's actually a horse pad that goes underneath of a uh, saddle. And it is the same thickness, just like this. It's a the same thickness. So it's a, a half inch thick and it's 100% wool. And so I'm pretty excited um, to use my giant uh, felt pad. So we'll see. I bought it at a, a, a supply company for horses and it was much cheaper. It was only uh, $24. So instead of spending big bucks on a giant wool mat at a quilt shop, I just bought one from a company that supplies um, tack to horse owners. So always uh, look out there for alternatives because you want to spend all of your dollars on good fabric. All right, so this is going to lay like a four patch. So if you notice, this is going to meet in the center. So I'm going to iron half of my seams towards the, the long, easy corner, and I'm going to do half of my seams towards the, the two patch. So I'm going to take two of these, right? And I, this one is towards the dark. And I'm going to go ahead and match them up so that when I lay this block out and I get ready to sew it, all my seams are nesting. All right, now I'm going to show you something right here. And a lot of new sewers get really stressed out when they see this. They said, my block is messed up. And they see this little thing right there. This little notch or cutoff point right there just means that that is your quarter inch seam and so when I lay my ruler on there and I lay my quarter inch ruler on that edge that quarter inch line and I check it that edge of my ruler should fit right there and what that tells me is that that is very accurate and I like that so always check and so if that's blunted that's the way it should look if that is not blunted that's the way it should look and I'm going to press this up. This should now be a four and a half inch square. So if I measure it this way and I measure it this way, it should be four and a half inches. I'm going to lay my little ruler and I'm just going to check it. And that is four and a half inches this way. And I'm going to lay it here. And if I look, it's exact four and a half inches that way. So this is a four and a half inch square. If your square is ever a little off kilter, if it's too small, you can always try pressing it carefully outward. Sometimes you can even just barely push it out like this and it actually changes the size of your block by almost a sixteenth of an inch. So there we go. So we have that one. That seam is going this way, right, towards my dark. So I'm going to take and I'm going to do the opposite side and I'm going to nest that seam on the opposite side. I'm going to open this up and this one is towards the light. So I need one that's towards the dark so that they will nest, right? And I want that to nest. So this goes down and this goes up and I'm going to sew this one with my seam to the light and that way and go opposite. And so I can take this over to my machine now and I can match this up. And this is how it should look. I'm going to be careful to pin and make sure that this intersection here matches so that when I sew it right here, those will nest and go opposite directions. And that little corner right there will match. And these are the right sides. And so I'm going to nest that seam. See, one goes one way and one goes the other. And just feel it with your fingers. 
and make sure that that nests very well so that when you sew it, it does what it's supposed to do. You can always pin it as well. Some people prefer to pin theirs. I'm not a super pinner. I pin when I need to, but not always. All right, let's check our seam. Look at that, I like how that turned out. Do you see that point? It did not get chopped off. And I have my seams are now, this one is going this way, this one is going that way, and this one is going this way. And so this way my seams go clockwise and that tends to reduce the amount of bulk that you have later. And so your seams are going all opposite directions. I'm gonna press set the seam a little bit trying to ensure that my block stays square. And I'm gonna press it open. And I like that that point did not get chopped off. So if you notice, that is an accurate point right there. Did not get chopped off. And it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now I need the other half of my block. So now, I'm going to pay attention to which direction those are going. So this is going up. So that means this one is the correct one. It's going down. Yes, down. And up. So this one will go this way. And this one will go. And look what I've done. Pressed one the wrong way. Let me see. That happens to all of us, right, friends? Nope, oh, that's correct. And this one's correct. There you go. This is supposed to pinwheel. So this one goes down. This one goes this way. So this one goes that way to, towards the dark. This one goes towards the light. Always check your pattern because for a moment I got angly challenged. So this is how my block is going to lay. And so now that I know that this is pressed this way, I'm gonna take this really quick, press this down, set my seam, press it down. I'm going to set my seam, press it down. And now my block is laying the way it should for its final stitching. I'm gonna sew these two units together and then I will join both halves through the middle. And that's pretty much how I sew an entire quilt top as well. So now I will make sure that those are nesting. So that I can match those up. I like when my seams nest. So I will match those up. And fill a little so. All right. How's it going out there? You guys uh, have any questions about easy corners? Do you have any questions about pressing? I talked a lot about pressing and easy corners tonight. Hi, Bettina. Bettina's here. Does anybody have questions about pressing or easy corners that are like burning on your mind? You're thinking, wow, I, I don't know why this happens. One of the things that I've noticed is um, I had a spool of thread that I bought recently that kept breaking. And I suspect that it maybe it sat around a long time. It 
the quilt, uh, the quilt store or whoever um, had it. I'm pretty sure I bought it at a quilt shop. But sometimes thread can dry rot. And if you notice that a, a spool of thread is breaking a lot, you can try changing your needle and then testing it for breakage and seeing if that, that impacts anything because you can really actually get thread that dry rots and then that's a pain in the neck when you're trying to sew. Because you'll notice that it breaks or it causes issues. All right, how's it going, people? You guys are doing okay with your block so far? All right, let me check that point up here at the top, and I love how that turned out. That is turning out the way it's supposed to. I did not chop off that point. See how it's nice and sharp? Now I, this one is pressed this way, so this one will get pressed the opposite direction. Because whenever you, you uh, put those going in the opposite direction, you will get seams that nest. And so now, when I lay this on top, I'm going to press that. I don't hardly need to pin at all, and I will just put that on top. If you notice, the seam is going down towards the dark. The seam is going up towards the light, and the same is true over here. This one is going down towards the light. This one is going towards the dark, and so my seams kind of tend to go like in a clockwise motion, and I do that because your block lays flatter, and I nest that seam in the middle. You can drop a pin there if you want. If you want to be super accurate, you just take with your fingers, and I usually just put a single pin right there. I don't pin the entire length of my block and I take it and I match up wherever it needs to match up. So this one needs to match up over here on this side and over here on this side. So I will match those up and I'll take them to my machine and I make sure that those are super accurate. And it helps that the seams go in opposite directions. So I'll be right back when we sew those together and we'll open this block and see what it looks like. All of the blocks that we're making use the same exact uh, measurements, which are all the subunits are two and a half inches. So every one of the subunits are two and a half inches. take a grid of four by four, which all of these are on a four by four grid, and you sew accurate two uh, quarter inch seams, and you start out with all two and a half inch squares. Look at that. Those are good points here, and those are good points here. That makes me happy. And that block should now measure eight and a half inches. So I'm going to press that. I'm going to set that big seam down the middle. And by sewing those in opposite directions, those seams will lay fairly flat. And I can press this just all to one side. And this should now measure eight and a half by eight and a half. And all of your blocks should measure eight and a half by eight and a half. That seam doesn't want to lay where it wants to, so I'm just going to set the iron there for a second and press that guy into submission. You've got to be the boss of the fabric and tell it what to do. It should not tell you what to do. So you are the boss of that fabric. And look at that block. So now I'm going to measure it. I'm going to compare it to my model. And this is what I have. I have uh, this pinwheel that sort of spins here. And then I have these in the corner. Like I said, this is a great block for scraps because you could make these four different colors and then you, these could be four different colors. And so this makes a really awesome scrap block. So tell me how's it going, friends? You doing all right so far? Look, I have crazy hair today. So this is the block. And let me measure it to make sure that it's eight and a half inches now that it's pressed and ready. So let me measure. A lot of times I will just use my um, mat here and I will lay it and I will measure across one side. And if you look, 
it is eight and a half inches across and I will flip this over and check the other side. It's eight and a half inches across. If I check the other side, it is eight and a half inches across. If I rotate one more time and I check from corner to corner, it is eight and a half inches. And that makes me happy. So that block is now ready to go. So now always do this with quilts too. Measure it and then cut your uh, binding on a large quilt or your borders to match the size of your quilt top. And you will be less likely to get wavy, wavy uh, borders or binding. So here I'm going to cut off this selvage and then I'm going to cut this eight and a half inches long and put it on two sides. You've seen me do this. You can use your board if you want to do this or you can use your ruler. It matters not a ton for this particular thing. And then I'm going to cut two that are 12 and a half inches because this block, once you border it, should measure 12 and a half inches. Now, if you want to add your borders later and decide with what's left from your jelly roll, that's fine too. So I have two that are eight and a half inches. And then I need to cut two that are 12 and a half inches. And I should have a little tiny sliver left over. So this is 12 and a half inches. This is gonna be a little bit longer than what I need on the sides, but this should be fairly close. Let's cut that at 12 and a half. So I need two that are 12 and a half and two that are eight and a half. And this is all that you should have left of your sashing strip. So you're wasting very little. I do not like to waste anything. Does anybody have any questions about piecing the block, ironing the block, or anything related to this block at all? Does anyone have any questions? It is 8.52. We have been efficient tonight. Friends, this block had a lot less trimming in pieces. So now when I lay that eight and a half inch piece across, and that looks pretty darn accurate. So when I look at that, I'm like, yep, my block is eight and a half inches. And I'm going to sew that with the sashing down towards the feed dogs and the block up so that I can check that those things don't go crazy directions. And so I'm going to sew that with the sashing downward, right? And that helps me to keep my block from getting wobbly on me as well. Because sometimes when you have a lot of seams and, you, and they're on the feed dog side, they can get flipped the wrong direction. You can kind of veer off course. And so by putting your sashing down towards the feed dogs, that helps you to maintain that accuracy that you need. So there we go, one side. If you notice, I always use a leader or an ender when I'm quilting and sewing because that saves a lot of thread. So I don't take and pull a big giant strip of thread that's like seven or eight inches every time I sew, and that saves a ton of thread over time. Especially when you have a quilt that has a lot of pieces, a lot of little pieces, you can burn through some thread really quick if you don't use a leader or an ender. That also reduces the amount of re-threading you have to do on your machine. And uh, it just saves a lot of time to use a leader and ender. If you don't know what a leader or ender is, it's just a scrap piece of thread. If you notice, I've sewn over that like a million times. And I just lead my, um, lead it under my pressing foot. It also keeps your corners, like if you're doing a lot of half square triangles with corners, it keeps that little corner from dipping in under your feed dogs and getting chewed up. So like if you're sewing little tiny triangles like this, it keeps them from getting chewed up. Okay. I said I was going to show you what to do with these little guys, right? So you're going to take these little guys that we cut off of those easy corners, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with mine. Okay. 
your little easy corners are tiny little half square triangles like this. I want you to sew on this side of the easy corner. So it could be either this side or this side. But I want you to sew a single seam, not on the long side, but on the short side. And I'm going to do this on all four of these easy corners. So I'm going to finish my block, but I'm also going to show you what to do with these little guys so that they're not being wasted. These are my little practice babies, and I'll show you what I'm doing with those. You're here, right? We're going to press that open really quick to the outside. I always press my seams the same, my uh, sashing the same way. So I'm going to take these, and here's my sashing. I'm going to set that seam. I'm going to check it to make sure I didn't veer off course, and then I'm just going to press it. both sides that's looking pretty good my blocks looking really flat and now I'm gonna lay these that are 12 and a half inches across the top and the bottom and if I've done my job those fit like that if I've done what I'm supposed to do and I lay that across the top and the bottom this should be 12 and a half inches so I lay that on there and if I look at that that is 12 and a half inches, so I know that that's dead on. So I'm going to do the opposite side. And while I'm finishing this up, I'm also going to chain piece. Hmm. So this one didn't look like it was the correct size, but I just pressed this out. So I know that this particular strip here needs to be pressed because it has a wrinkle in it and it's causing it problems. So I'm going to press this one. I didn't have to do that to the other ones, but it needs to be really flat. And now when I lay it down, it is correct and it's accurate. And that sometimes happens. So I always recommend pressing as you go and checking. That's a super, super good hack to get into. Finishing up the other side. Like I said, for those of you who joined us a little bit later, did any of you have a question about the summer sampler? Did you have a question about any of the blocks, pressing, selling, any burning question? I'd be glad to answer it for you while I'm here live. So just let me know. I saw a couple of questions in the comments that I will answer later on. When I get off of here, all right, friends. That is a wrap, so let's see. I'm gonna press these down and let's see what has happened to these guys. And then when I open it, I should have a block that is 12 and a half inches square. I'm gonna press to the outside. And I'm just pushing that with my um, iron. I'm not creating a lot of uh, downward pressure. So I use an iron that's super lightweight. I have a little travel iron that I use and this super inexpensive Proctor Silex that I paid $7.95 for at Walmart. So I do not use really expensive quilt materials. You don't need them. You don't need super expensive irons. You can do this 
with um, some low cost, easy tools. And my goal is to spend the least amount as possible on my extras so that I can spend all of my dollars on my fabric. So I love fabric. Just lay it on there, let it do its thing. And when you have it, your block should be done. Voila! And that's what your block should look like tonight. So this is block six in the summer sampler series. And now I'm going to show you what to do with those four little friends that we nipped off. And I have those from last time as well. So I'm going to take these over here. And remember I said you're going to sew them on this little side, not the long side, but the short side. And I'm going to sew them all. Quarter inch seam. I'm just going to string them together. Never waste a thing is my motto. I think because my grandmother lived during the Depression, she always taught me to be very frugal. Put your love with stuff all over the ground when you're sewing. And so I don't like to waste my cute little fabric. Not even one tiny sliver of it. All right, so I have my little chain of friends. And like I said, when you're sewing those little corners, if you notice, they did not get chewed up by my sewing machine because using that leader and that ender prevents those little guys from becoming victims of the, the feed dogs on your sewing machine. So let me show you what to do with these little friends. Now that I have my little friends all in a row, I'm going to press that seam, get rid of any wobble. I'm going to snip them apart. Snippity snip. And now we open them. And these are not half square triangles because if you sew on the long side, that's a half square triangle. But these instead are quarter square triangles. So if you sew on the vertical seam of that 90 degree triangle, and I'm going to press them in opposite directions, I am going to make four little babies. So look at this one here. So this one goes towards the white and this one goes towards the white. So you're going to do this one towards the white. You can also do them towards the dark. doesn't matter much as long as they are both going in opposite directions like this. And when I sew those together, look what I end up with. I end up with a two and a half inch hourglass. And then I trim it up with my little ruler. And when I sew that together, I should be able to get a little two and a half inch hourglass. Maybe if the seams are too big, a two inch, but that's how I use my little easy corners. And so if you have been following me on, on the summer sampler, I said I would show you how not to waste those. And so I will get two little hourglass blocks. And if you have enough of those, by the time we're done, you can actually have a mug road. And you can give that to somebody, maybe yourself. Just going to lay those right there. Match those seams. And then you are going to be able to have a little tiny quarter square triangle. On each of the four little corners of this little square. Save those up and you will be able to do a lot of fun things. There you go, friends. There's a little block. Ah! Look at that little seam. I didn't match my seam. Bad, bad sewing lady, right? Didn't pin it. When it's little like this, pin it, friends. Because these are all bias seams. Bias, bias, bias. And try this one. You can see that just pressing with my fingernail sometimes is enough there we go match that little seam and i won't have to see where it's like the other front okay. 
None of us are perfect friends, so if you ever make a mistake, don't panic. Seam rippers are great little friends. They help us resolve all types of little sewing catastrophes. And there we have it. That one is perfect. Look at this one. This one is not because I didn't center that and I was not paying attention. I was like, la di da and it was off by that much. You can tell right there. See that bad block? Cute block. And now you can just take this little guy, press it, and trim it up. And I make little hourglass blocks with all of my leftovers and then I make little quilts for my granddaughter so her dolls have like little tiny quilts that I've made for her and so this is what you do with your little baby triangles that you chop off and you square that off and you have these little guys so save all of your bits because those make cute little bonus blocks all right everybody it is 906 we are done with our block does anybody have any questions before we jump offline I like this little block I think it turned out cute uh, let me know if you have any questions, and we will see each other next Sunday. Um, I'm going to start a live Zoom, and I'm going to drop the link in our Facebook page if anybody wants to ask me questions directly. And you guys have a beautiful Sunday. Happy Easter to everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday, and thank you for tuning in. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you guys later.